In this video, we'll learn how to use the Sculpting Viz applets to turn handcrafted artifacts into computer graphics elements usable in artifact-based rendering, or AVR, visualizations. We'll start by navigating to sculptingviz.tac.utexas.edu, where we'll land on the home page where the Sculpting Viz applets and libraries live. The library is where the artifacts go when uploaded from the applets. So we're just gonna go ahead here and open up both pages. In our library, you can see we have all of our glyphs, color maps, textures, and lines. Each of these categories of artifacts has an associated class, which are these labels along the top, and family, which are these labels along the side. We can see each unique category for color maps, textures, and lines. All the elements you see here are part of our curated library with recommended artifacts ready to go. Now on the applets page, we have several options to choose from. We'll start with Color Loom, the applet used to generate color maps used in AVR. This is our empty canvas in the middle. We can drag up to four images into this workspace from a file manager. As an example, I'll open up my file manager here and drag and drop these two images into our canvas space. As you can see, Color Loom has automatically picked a series of colors from the image for us. We can click and drag these over to the right side, where the program will interpolate between the chosen colors, creating a color map. If we don't like the way a certain color looks, you can simply click on a swatch and hit the delete button, and it will be removed from the color map and the right-hand panel. If the automatically picked color isn't quite right, you can hover over the swatch in the canvas workspace area, and then come over here to the left and adjust the HSV sliders, which will in turn change the swatch to your desired hue. We've adjusted this color to appear a bit more blue, so now we can drag and drop it into the Color Map Builder space. If we're happy with that, we can go up here to Save to Library. A window will pop up asking you to decide on a family and class for the new color map. So here, let's say it's in the blue family and the linear class. Click OK, and your new color map will appear in the library. Our next applet is the Glyph Aligner. This applet is great for creating three-dimensional, directionally sensitive glyphs to be used in the ABR interface. Typically, we will 3D scan the glyphs using a 3D scanner or photogrammetry application. For now, we've prepared a test.obj model for this demonstration. We can drag it into the window and see the example glyphs change to reflect the new 3D object. Our goal here in this left window is to align the forward direction of this object with the dotted axis that says forward here in this cube. We can use our right mouse button to reorient the cube until the forward axis lines up with the forward direction of the glyph, which can be wherever we want. Here the left mouse button allows us to move around and make sure we've aligned the glyph with the axis sufficiently. Now that we have our glyph aligned, we can see on our preview visualization over here on the right that our column glyph is correctly aligned with the directionality of the data. Next, we want to render a quick thumbnail. This is what we'll see in our library when we're looking for our glyph. Get your glyph set up to the desired alignment, then click Render Thumbnail. Finally, we need to choose the glyph's family and class. Let's say this one is in the Direction class and in the Box family. Click export.obj and your newly aligned glyph object will appear in the glyph library. Next up is the line applet. We can use this applet to create streamlines or ribbons in ABR. The idea behind the applet is to allow a user to create anything they want outside of the program, any texture or ink wash, and then drag it into this applet, which will automatically generate an infinitely repeating version of that pattern, which can be used as streamlines in a visualization. By default, this box is checked that says, nothing fancy, just repeat it. The texture loops top to bottom, so it begins at the top, and then again at the top, etc. Perhaps we'd like to introduce some randomness to our custom streamline. By moving these sliders around, we can change the character of the line until we find something we want. When we're done, we can once again use our family and class categorization to save the new line to our library. Finally, we have our texture mapper applet. The texture mapper is used to create a variety of surfaces for the artifact-based rendering engine. 
This applet is quite flexible in that we can use any image to create a texture, as long as the image is a .png file. So we can just drag and drop this simple image here and use the crop window to find the area of texture we want, and that's it. Pretty easy. Once again, we can save to the texture section of the library by choosing family and class and then clicking export. That's it. Thanks for listening.